Yeah, hello, uh, Shavan Anenden. I'm very happy to welcome you in Bayreuth. And that well, we can screen your film, The Comeback, at Cineplex in cooperation with uh, Africa Multiple. Uh, first of all, it would be nice if you could present yourself, yourself to, to the public. All right, so I'm Shavan Anenden. This is my second feature film that I've done in Mauritius. And prior to becoming a film director, I was working in advertising in London. I was an art director, uh, I got sick of London and the <laughs> advertising world, so I tried to continue in uh, filmmaking because uh, in, in the middle of my career in advertising, I co-directed Les Enfants de Marron, my dad, but then didn't pursue the idea of cinema, and then for the comeback in 2015, I thought, let me take a chance at, uh, at a proper career as a director, and that's why I'm here today. Okay, great. We are happy that you are with us today. So we would like to talk a little bit about uh, about your film, and I would hand over to Ade Banjo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the first question I would like to ask you is, uh, what informed the, uh, the the title of the film, The Comeback? Uh, so the, the whole story was written by my mom, and it was the first time she wanted to do something that was directly for the screen. So it's the first time... Excuse me, you should mention who your mom is. Uh, <laughs> my mother is Ananda Devi, a prominent writer from my country of Mauritius. And uh, we adapted Les Enfants Trop Marron from F de Cédécombe and made a film. And for the comeback, that, that was an original piece for, uh, for cinema. That, so she directly write, wrote the script. She came up with a title and it just has to do with the idea that it's three retired Bollywood actors who would like to make their comeback. And uh, that's a term in the industry to do a comeback. So that's it. Okay. Maybe that would be a good moment to give a little bit more of information about, about the content. So there are three Bollywood actors. Three Bollywood actors, they're retired. Uh, they still have this passion for cinema and acting. Uh, but uh, everyone is telling them they're too old to continue their career. Uh, so they meet a, a woman who would like to be a film director, but because she's a woman, she will easily hit a glass ceiling because of the patriarchy in India and in the Bollywood industry. So both, uh, this little group of people who are marginal from the industry decide to have this very far-fetched idea to follow a young and up-and-coming actor from Bollywood kidnap him in Mauritius and try to convince him to make a film with them. And it's a comedy, it's not a drama, it's not a... <laughs> Thank you. Um, also, I, 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 I do know, I don't know if you've, you've heard about The Comeback in the United States, there's a film, The Comeback. No. Okay. I heard there's a TV show. There's a TV show, The Comeback. With a woman from uh, France? Yeah. Yeah, no, I heard about that. Okay, so it doesn't have a way of influencing the topic? Uh, no, no, it was just... Uh, just it just happened. It's not just happened. everywhere. Okay. <laughs> not everywhere. <laughs> okay, and um, do, I, did you, like you said, okay, it was a, a story, uh, maybe written by your mom, yeah. and you brought it forth into a, a film, you made it, you produced the film? Yeah. Okay. Um, the question now is, um, did you, um, at any point, uh, what are the difficulties you have making it into a film, if I want to ask you? Could you be a bit okay, more what are the, when you Everything is annoying and okay. difficult. And okay, <laughs> when, when, when you so got the story, yeah. did you face any difficulty in adapting it into That's, a film? Uh, the difficulty that I had was that initially it was very easy. But we didn't realize how big the film was, so I did everything myself because on when I when I, my direction in uh, Les Enfants Trop Marron was a standalone one as well. Uh, it was a much smaller film, so we could have a small team, and I enjoyed the fact that we were a small team. It's quicker to handle. It's uh, just easier to manage, and I thought I'd do that with the comeback and. She wrote the comeback, we read it together, we wrote certain things, and we did not realize it was a much, much, much bigger film. And uh, so I, had to, uh, I wanted to direct myself, I wanted to do the cinematography myself, and it was just a pain in the ass, you know, say those words. Uh, it was painful. Yeah, so it, initially, initially there wasn't any problems because it was just really fun to try to manage a schedule. And uh, as we were going along, the production went for a long time, there was a lot of reshoot because the film was so big and we should have had a bigger team to handle a lot of things. 
Yeah, then you said in, um, beforehand that it's a comedy. Um, there are not so many comedies, actually, and if we would stick to the category of African films. Mm -hmm. Uh, why have why have you opted the both, um, the two of you maybe then together for a comedy? Honestly, that was <clears throat> her idea. So she came when she came up with the script. I was I didn't even choose to uh, end my career in advertising and go into cinema. It was just a little idea she had on the side, and she was mm. telling me about it. And then things merge uh, just randomly, and uh, <clears throat> her idea was to write something funny. Okay. And I was happy with that because if I like. I, I'm trying to get a career as a film director and I wouldn't mind going into comedy because that's what I prefer as well. Mm. <laughs> so it's okay. a good start for me. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, you mentioned before, the, the starting point of the film is all the problems that those three retired actors have and mm. also this young uh, yeah. film director who, who's not, who cannot enter the industry just because she's a young woman. So at the same time, it's a very, very serious topic mm -hmm. actually especially especially for the young woman yeah. it shows all the problems i mean from harassment to um so the... uh, to a lot of other problems that you have in in this big film industry so i wondered if you also maybe i mean you just said something else but when i saw the film i also wondered maybe uh, you have opted also for comedy because it's kind of a delicate topic to to deal with and if you deal in, in it with a in a, in a comedy mm -hmm. It's easier to for for the public and whoever is involved to say, okay, no, yeah, it's okay. just a comedy. Come on. Um, if the, the the ideas of marginalization were a mm. theme in the film, mm. then uh, yeah, we would have used comedy to educate people in a much easier way. But they're not theme at all. It's just con contextual, mm. and it's just a way for the people to be brought together. It's just mm. uh, so yeah, it's just contextual. It's not a theme throughout the film. And, uh, It's just, it's yeah, just to introduce the characters, mm -hmm. but because throughout the film we don't go back to those ideas of discrimination. Mm. We just continue with uh, their motivation and their context of kidnapping someone. Mm. So, yeah, it was just kidnapping like, someone. Because it happens often, it's just normal. Uh, to kidnap it's a normal someone. thing to oh, do in okay. Hollywood and Bollywood. <laughs> kidnap people. Okay, um, there were some concepts that you brought into the film. Um, that uh, I would love to share more idea yeah. with us. Um, like uh, the woman who wants to be a film director, who believed that we could match the old with the new and produce something more meaningful. Now, is that a real situation in Mauritius now? Like bringing the old to meet the new, like the old actors to meet the new? Is this something uh, well, you personally believe not in? Not in Mauritius, because there's not that much of the cinema industry. But in general, ageism okay. is a problem in the entertainment industry. Okay. So you would see that in Europe and in, in America as well. Uh, usually when there's a film with older people, they're either secondary characters or it's an ensemble cast and the theme is about their age. But you don't have this... Uh, rarely get this mixture where they're all protagonists together. Okay, so one of the concepts you wanted to really bring in is ageism. Actually, yeah, yeah, okay. good thing, yeah. Okay. <laughs> good point. I didn't, yeah, so... Yeah. Okay, now the, the second part I would also want to ask is, um, uh, why did you choose um, them to use something like, at a point when the actor was kidnapped, yeah. they choose to, apart from the kidnapping, yeah. they also tried to do blackmail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose the steam of blackmail to for them to get their result? Because if if you thought about it, if you would be crazy enough to go into that direction, blackmail would be a tool that you would use to coerce someone. It's just uh, you know it's criminology one on one. So yeah. That's <laughs> okay. So now that brings us to another thing: criminology. Yeah. So one of the things you try to achieve in that film also is bringing to be a the investigation of crime. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that brings me to um, why did you choose to bring an inspector, a detective, all the way from the United Kingdom to investigate something that is taking place right there in Mauritius? Uh, the role of the investigator was for a Mauritian woman initially. So that didn't happen because uh, the, wom the woman was the main actress from Les Enfants Trumaro. 
She got pregnant, she couldn't do the thing. And then we auditioned the role. Uh, Robert Ferland came with another guy who was the inspector and they auditioned together. And that guy had great energy and he had a perfect accent. And we thought we need to get him in. And we thought the best way to do so was to not make him appear as a local, but as someone who came from, uh, uh, from outside. And Mauritius uh, still have a long history with, uh, with England and, uh, and the monarchy. And it's not unheard of for a small country like Mauritius, uh, Mauritius to get consultant from outside for certain issues, whether it's an investigation or a business deal or uh, social issues into politics. Okay. Now this brings me to another question before I hand over to them. Um, do you think, because you said, you talk about ageism and everything, do you think that, would you advise that, or would you say that the new generation of film producers yeah. have a lot to learn from the older generation in order to get a more formidable one, uh, something more uh, um, beautiful? Yeah, but that's a bit of an obvious statement because uh, the history is already there, the work is already there, so you just need to just make your education on your own, you know, things will always evolve. You need the past to be able to go forward and not to repeat your mistakes and evolve or uh, retrofit so you can make an homage to the past and get different ideas in the future. So, thank you. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about Bollywood. <laughs> because the film starts in, in India and in the context of Bollywood industry. Uh, um, I mean, this was an obviously also, I, 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 guess, I imagine at least, that this has, must have been a, also a decision to, to take it from there and not to take it from England, for example, with three retired actors from Great Britain could have been an option. Uh, it was initially for the UK. The producer <laughs> he found okay. wanted it to be in India. Okay. Yeah, we were gonna, we could have, uh, he wanted Indian actors. So we okay. were going to shoot in the UK with Indian actors and have these Bollywood themes, uh, but we thought it would be a good call to try to do it more. Mm -hmm. I mean, seeing also the, 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 the historical relationship between India and Mauritius, I always also thought that maybe it's due to that fact, because, I mean, no, media and everything a, is quite present in Mauritius. It was more a financial and creative strategy, okay. logistic strategy that would be more... Uh, Bollywood films are also, I mean, I, I imagine, at least I saw quite a lot of Indian media channels in, in Mauritius also on TV. So oh, yeah, but people, so no, people we, like that particular... We didn't also. think about it that way. Because oh, okay. uh, yeah. they do shoot more... Uh, Indian film go everywhere. They, shoot everywhere. Mm. they have the money to, do, to shoot anywhere. And anywhere. Yeah, so it's, uh, there's a lot of Bollywood actually in, in the film, also in terms of singing and yeah. dancing. Um, could you say so, a little bit about that? I mean, how, how this came about and how people <coughs> think about it and also the actors? Uh, initially, the theme of Bollywood was a bit more tame because we didn't have any singing. So we went through the whole shoot of the film and once it was finished, the producer required us that, to add music because it would be more competitive in India because that's where he wanted to go. Mm -hmm. So those songs were added after we finished the principal okay. photography. <laughs> yeah. So it took it, it added another two years because we had to travel to India, we had to find the songs, uh, then we have to plan the shoot for the, uh, the musicals and all that stuff and it just, uh, it was a problem to add those pieces of music mm. inside the story that was already written. Mm. We had to make it look a bit natural, and I still have. A, I'm happy they're there, but I mean they don't fit that well. I mean, but the one there on, I mean, the people when they watch this video, maybe then they have already seen the film. Hopefully, or they get more curious, especially that one that is close to the beach where they're singing and dancing. That looks very much like Bollywood. The romantic production. one, yeah, the also, romantic one. That one that actually happened. Very with. good. And that one, <laughs> that fits, very that one well. fits in the pastiche of Bollywood. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So, uh, yeah, that one works out. But, but even in the film, it worked there. This one okay. works very oh, cool. well. Okay, cool. I was the first one, it was a bit, hmm, okay. Maybe it's also because the, in the beginning of the film and in, in the office, 
you're a bit as a spectator, you're a bit surprised. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, now yeah. they dance and sing. But then, in a Bollywood yeah. logic, it should not be a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> we could even get up and dance okay. and sing now in the middle of the interview. It would be mm -hmm. no surprise. <laughs> 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 I brought my golden okay. scarf well, for that. <laughs> these are backup dancers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you said that you have ad uh, the, that the filmmaking was also not that easy because you had to do, or you also wanted to do everything yourself. Maybe can you also say a little bit about photography in the film? Uh, so initially, like I wanted to get into cinema because I love cinematography. I've always been really impressed by how an image looks. Mm. It's, it's almost hypnotizing. So I was really happy to be able to handle my own camera and do the lighting. Uh, I did it with a minimal of instruments and. It kind of worked out in a way, but at the same time, I mean, that's why I like cinema. Every time you do a film, even if there's a lot of flaws, you already know that what you should do better next time from what you learned from your previous mistake. Um, and that was the fun part to, to get my own camera. Mm. I would not like to, like, Les Enfants Trop Marron, we had a director of photography. I didn't like the idea. Mm. It was very cumbersome. Mm. Um, On a personal note, he was not happy I was there, so uh, <laughs> he was not cooperative on purpose. It was a massive problem. Uh, so uh, on, his off on, on the comeback, uh, it was really cool to be able to do it myself. But I should. But I was also doing the producing, and that was a bit of an error because there was too much to handle. Yeah, I mean producing is. Uh... My first day of shoot. So in France, in summer, the sun goes down uh, around 9 or 10 p.m. I completely forgot it was different in, in Mauritius. So my first day of shoot, uh, by two o'clock, I didn't start shooting because I'm managing all the little things, having to bring food for the actors. By four o'clock, I see the sun coming down. And every time we press start and stop to record, the sun has changed angle. And at the end, like my first day of shoot, I was not able to have anything. <laughs> so that was very traumatizing. Mm, so. Okay. But then, yeah, but then you, lo you learned the lesson during the first yeah. day and it changed. I mean, that's the, the advantage room. I've learned uh, <laughs> on the field uh, in a brutal way, so mm. that's the best way to learn. And can you also give us a little bit more information about the main actors in the film? Yeah, so everything was shot in Mauritius and all the actors are Mauritian. Yeah. So technically the least Mauritian person on the production was me, because <laughs> I was born there but I didn't grow up there. Um, in the audition process, it was important for us to tell them that they would need to be able to have a, uh, to be fluent in English. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't have that much experience with, the, with uh, acting in English, they should have a command of it. Most of them had. Um, in the audition process, most of them came from the theater. So the only problem we had is during the audition, they would project their voice because that's what theater people mm. do. So like, you guys need to dial it back because you don't need to reach the audience at the back mm. of the room. So that was the only thing. Otherwise, they had good energy and there was, a, from the beginning, we saw there was a great back and forth from the people we chose in the end. Mm. And they didn't know each other at all. Okay. So that showed uh, uh, that they had personality and they had experience mm. for, for them to be able to, to, to show this chemistry immediately on the first try. That was, mm really lucky for us. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I thought that the young, uh, I forgot his name, but the, Edin, the one who Edin was, who, who's playing the, the yeah. role of the Indian actor who's kidnapped, mm. I thought that, he, that he's Indian, actually. Uh, but yeah. he's also Mauritian. Yeah. And this was his first film, acting? Uh, his first star, it, uh, it's, all the, it's their first starring role for all of them. They did advertising before, or secondary roles in shorts okay. and bigger productions. Okay, yeah, but then, I mean, the film is fun watching, I think, and, okay. Thank uh, you. and the singing and dancing scenes get better till the end. I mean, the first one, as I told you, man, this is my very Did you like the experience. second one as I well? Didn't, I didn't like the, f the, the first one. Okay. Um, and the second one, I don't remember. It, the places of worship, they go around, it's a bit touristy. Ah, yeah, that, yes. yeah. yeah. No, but that was already, beautiful. yeah. At least that's oh, what I, was I know the like, first one was like a, yes. getting to a climax and then to the romantic scene, which okay. is what said. Okay, now they should just add another hour because Bollywood films are at least two hours or three hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was happy we had to cut our film. It's barely 90 minutes, so yeah, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Um, no, okay, then um, because you mentioned already. Uh, 
So there was a first film, this is now the second film, and uh, I know you just uh, released, or you just had a book published in photography. Could you also tell us a little bit about that? Quite different <coughs> from your films, but still, I mean, still into yeah, photography. Yeah, so uh, there's a Mauritian writer called Barlen Payamutu who wanted to launch a, a, a book festival in Trudeau-Douce, which is a small village by the sea where he lives. And uh, so he knows my mom and he knew I was a filmmaker. So he just randomly asked me if I wanted to do a photography book. And then me, I'm like, all right, cool, <laughs> no problem. And he asked us another photographer, but he found him on the street as well. So the second photographer in the book, he's a young Mauritian who's 20 years old. He just came back from South Africa after his studies. He saw him on the street like a tourist with a, with a small camera. Like, do you want to do a photography book? He's like, yeah. So that's what we did after for several months. Yeah. <laughs> He got really lucky, we did this book, uh, it was a good launch with the festival, I mean, you were there, and we are doing an expo in December. In Trudeau-Douce? No, at L'Artelier in Port Louis. Oh yeah, okay. And then uh, next year we might do, to, do a bigger one at Codon Art Center, which is in Port Louis. Okay, okay, but on the same project, or it will be also a larger project then? Uh, it, it, no, it's the same project, but there will be more photos. Mm. There was some restriction between the type of projects we had to do. For the one in Codon Art Center, we might be more free to expose oh. a bit more, because there's more space and mm. more time. I mean, to me, for me, Uh, seeing this book was a bit of a surprise because after this very colorful, <laughs> opulent Bollywood kind of film, uh, this this book is in is are all black and white photographies. Uh, that was that was yeah, already the choice of Berlin. From the beginning, he knew what he wanted to do with the formatting of the book. He wanted something in black and white. He didn't want any titles on the pages, and he knew we should not have first the photo of Laurent, mm. second the photo of Charlotte. Mm. Um, so yeah, he wanted something that was a bit floaty and dreamy, mm. like there's no, there's not a necessary logic to the pages and the choice of. Photos. Yeah, but the point actually I wanted to make is, I mean, it's 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 just also I mean ama I mean amazing. It's it was surprising to me to see how someone coming from filmmaking oh, and uh, uh, advertisement yeah. and arts uh, art design and so on, uh, I mean doing so in a completely different for. Uh, Format, let's say, and also black and white photography would also be very different than from uh, photography in colors. And I mean, the, the very impressive and beautiful okay. uh, uh, pictures of and very close to people and to this very small uh, village, but very, let's say, a little bit traditional, still traditional village, okay. kind of. So, um, like, even if even if Berlin. Piamuto was the one who had the idea. You still did. I mean, you and Laurent uh, took the photos, and you have. I mean, <laughs> you have to. You need to have then also the eye and to capture the atmosphere. And with black and white, it's it's very different. Um, so, so I was just surprised. I said, yeah, that, that was a very beautiful book, and you obviously you go into a, quite a diff at least with this book and the yeah. exhibitions that are coming up into a quite a different direction. Well, in general, we all specialize in a specific medium. That's usually the path most people would take. But I never did that. So when I was an art director, I've worked on different medium all the time. So I always switch from one, one thing to the other. So it wasn't too mm. difficult for me. There's a learning process at the beginning. Physically be handling a camera that I haven't used, having to go towards people when I'm not that much of a social person. These were the problems I would have, but I would overcome them. But in general, it's uh, I've, even when I was in art school, my graduation portfolio, they were always different. I have done animation before, I've done 3D as well. Um, so yeah. And you skipped all of that when you introduced yourself in the beginning. <laughs> oh, okay, well, I'm singing now. <laughs> oh, you're singing. <laughs> Sorry? You're doing what? You're singing? No, 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 I'm doing it now. Oh, okay. Just presenting. <laughs> I've done it. Singing comes I, next. I thought you brought up the dimension <laughs> into it. No, but okay. Another thing, when I was a kid, I used to do a lot of graffiti as well. Mm, okay. But I got arrested for that, so I stopped. And, uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> so maybe just to um, yeah to to come to a last point um, in our interview, uh, I, the 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 project you're work I mean, besides the photography yeah. and the exhibitions. Um, I think you are working also on a new film. Uh, I'm trying to do a documentary. Uh, another format? Uh, the, sorry? <laughs> another, another genre again? Yeah, <laughs> because it's interesting to just change genre, mm. you know, but uh, 
And I always wanted to do documentaries, and uh, because of the COVID, there's more restriction. Mm. And uh, the documentary, it's a good strategy, because I was thinking, how can I try to do a project without having to go through the motion of looking for finances? And in Mauritius, it's a small country, I've already made a lot of contacts. It was a quick idea for me to think, if I approach someone to say, I would like to talk about their art, and I would like to talk about the history of, uh, of Mauritius, mm. I, uh, I wouldn't necessarily need to have a financial incentive because I already have a relationship with those people. Mm. So it's almost like it's a community project. That's why I don't need a lot of finances. I have my car, I have my camera, I have two other cameramen with their gear, and they're ready to work for free because it's a cool project and everyone just wants to do something interesting because mm. we were stuck at doing nothing for two years. Mm. Yeah. And you still haven't really said what the cool project is about. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a documentary. The history <laughs> of Mauritius seen through the eyes of the artist of Mauritius. Okay, one no, several artists several, of Mauritius. Yeah, yeah. So in general I was more interested in talking to all the artists because some of them were there since the independence. Mm. And uh, when we were interviewing them, uh, they would always talk about the past when I wasn't even born. And that's why it clicked. It would be cool to take some mm. themes of the history of Mauritius as a developing country, a developing new country, and then have uh, artists talk about mm. it because it would be related to the theme of their, uh, of their work. Okay. Mm. Sounds interesting, actually. Yeah. Because then you have, again, this, yeah, the perspective of artists uh, and what they also contribute yeah. and bring in very often, especially yeah. photography. Um, pay and painting is very off. I mean, like visual, for visual, the, not visual. Uh, I wanted to do a series of episodes. Uh, the first episode, for example, it's uh, uh, the, the actor, it's one of the actors that's in my film. He's a mm. playwright. And he's the one that talked to me about uh, the independence mm. and also censorship in theater. Mm. So it just clicked that it would be cool to talk about all those things because he's, he's an activist and he's a playwright and an actor. Okay. And, uh, so it was just a lot of thing to talk to and mm. it sounded original as well. I've never heard of that angle in a documentary. The second one is a younger artist called Ken and I was going to talk about the environment because he's someone who recycle uh, objects and make very complex instruments and he's a great musician. Mm. Another theme would be about the Ravan, which is a very Mauritian instrument. Mm -hmm. So by talking about this instrument, we would be interviewing musicians in a different field and we would be talking about the history of that uh, instrument that's mm. linked to slavery and all that stuff. So mm. all those different symbols have different elements in history mm. and they all gather together and we talk about the different aspect of the country. Mm. Okay, mm. when will it come out? Hopefully next year. Okay. So <laughs> the end of out. next year. The end. <laughs> I'm giving myself a year to do a few episodes. Okay, okay. We're looking forward to that. Mm. Yeah, so thank you very much well, thank um, you for, having me. for having shared all this information okay. and uh, hopefully you will be back next year then with a documentary okay. and graffiti hopefully, hopefully. and <laughs> 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 thank you very much. Thank you.